Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade the EX series camera, uh, both resolution and venue upgrades. This applies to the E4, E5, the E6, or even the E8 if you wanted. So a couple things that you'll need beforehand, and I'll include these links in the description. FLIR Tool 6, FLIR device drivers for the RNDIS drivers, FileZilla to transfer the files to the camera, and also transfer from the camera for the backup, Python 2.7, this will be used for the encryption of the configuration file for the resolution upgrade. Notepad++ is optional, but uh, definitely very handy. Some files you also need to download are the configuration file, so that's this conf.cfg, uh, the flash BFS folder, that's all the menu upgrades that you'll be applying. The cfc cfg v2.py, that'll encrypt our cfg file into a CFC file, and then crco3.exe, and that basically uh, returns a value that we need to add to our configuration file. So the first thing you'll want to do is install FLIR tools, and also install the device drivers. Once you've done that, you want to hook up your camera to your computer, and I'll run you through that part. Um, just as a little bit of background here, I am running Windows 11. It can be kind of finicky getting the camera to be recognized by the computer as a network device, but I was able to successfully do it on here. Um, it does seem if you use uh, Windows 11 and have a problem, or even Windows 10 with this, you can definitely try Windows 7 or Windows XP. If you don't have access to a computer that old, you may want to look into running it as a virtual machine, um, but unfortunately I don't cover that in this video. So on to the first step. We are going to go, after you download FLIR tools and the FLIR device drivers, you're going to go into your C drive, uh, program files, FLIR systems, FLIR tools, uh, BIN, bin, then you're going to scroll down until you get to FLIR install that right here. You can open that up. And as you can see here, we have our camera connected, it's on, and it shows up as FLIR USB video. So now, actually, one file that I forgot to mention in here is the RDIS temporary file that will also be in the description. So we're gonna browse once you have this downloaded. I put everything into my Python 2.7 folder. So that is at computer, C drive, Python 2.7. And actually didn't, whoops. Let's go back there. Okay, so this is the set rndis temporary.fif file. All you're going to do at this point is hit run fif. So it'll run a little bit. Takes a hot second. And then sometimes in the bottom right corner, it will give a little blue message and it'll also tell you the network path for the camera. Otherwise, another way to do it is just click refresh up here. And there we go. We have the camera. So that's its IP address 192.168.0.2. This could be different for you, uh, but if it doesn't start with 192, you uh, are going to have some issues and uh, you may want to play around a little bit to get it to show up properly. So now that we have this properly working, we are going to go to FileZilla. And we're going to connect to the camera. So in my case, my IP address was 192.168.0.2. If yours was different, you'll want to type exactly what yours was in here, as long as it does start with 192. Uh, in this case, the username is 
FLIR, so that's F-L-I-R, and the password is 3, V as in Victor, L as in Llama, I as in Igloo, and G as in Gator. So then we're going to click Quick Connect, click OK, and here is the directory for the entire camera. So I like to just click on one of these and go back to the main menu. Okay, so these are all the files on the camera. What we're going to do here is on the left side, this is your computer. So go to desktop or wherever you want to back up your files, right click, create deck directory, sorry. Um, we're going to do FLIR backup. So I've actually already created one, but you'd hit OK. So when you go into there, there will be no files in your version. I just have a lot of pictures on here, so it took a while to back up. What you're going to do is highlight everything on the right side and drag it over to the left side. And I already have duplicates in here because I already did this. So this shouldn't pop up for you. Now this won't transfer all the files, but it will transfer all the vital files. So if anything happens during the upgrade process, you make an error or anything, you'll have something to go back to pretty easily. So this is transferring. It's almost done. As you can see over here, there's about 145 failed files, which is totally fine and normal. So now we have our camera backed up. Anything goes wrong, we have something to go back to. Okay. Now we're done here for now. So now what we want to do is we want to open up our configuration file. So if we go back to that Python 27 folder. That's where I have the configuration file. Now you want to, first of all, use a CFG if happen, or if you happen to have a CFC file in there, you won't be able to open it in Notepad++. Um, so this file will be in the description as well. What you want to do is just enter your serial number on this bottom line. Make sure that there's no spaces after the serial number. And also make sure that there's the enter key entered after the serial number. So as you can see right now, I don't have it. Click enter. Now I do have an extra line here, line 171. So we're going to save this file. And now we're going to close out of here. And we're going to go to the command prompt. So you can just type CMD, enter. Now this is currently uh, in a directory that we don't want. So we're going to hit CD to change directory. And then we're going to point it to the path that we want the files to show in. So that's C Python 27. So now that we're in this folder, we're going to do CRC 03.exe and then you're going to type the name of the file that you want um, this value to return for. So that's for us, it's just conf.cfg. And that's the name of the file that we just put the serial number in. So this value is what we need to add to the file. So we're just going to double click it, control C. Now we're going to come back to this file, paste our value in there. And again, this always has to have an extra line on the bottom. So we click enter again and leave an empty space. So that's it for the configuration file. Now what we need to do is encrypt it so that it can go back on the camera. This uh, is a little bit more involved. So first of all, what you'll need is Telnet. Um, enabled on your computer. If you don't have it enabled, it, it'll give you a warning when you type in Telnet. And if that's the case, just Google how to activate Telnet on Windows 11, and it'll tell you exactly what to type in here, and it'll activate it for you. But I already have it activated on here, so I'm just going to type in Telnet 192.168.0.2. And again, this is the IP address that we used in FileZilla and also the one that showed on FLIR install net. And again, you can just go here, click refresh, and it shows your IP address. 
So now we have that. It brings us to this new menu. So this one is pretty easy. Just type in suid.exe. And this is a file that's on the camera that we're pulling up. So it brings the suid. Double click on that. And control C. And then we have that copied. We're also going to type in stop app and just click enter. Sometimes if your camera's um, on, completely on, the common underscore DLL file will not transfer. So a way to get by that is to type in stop app and hit enter. So now we're going to go back to the original command prompt in our Python 27 folder and we're gonna uh, use that Python file. So that's cfc cfg underscore v2 dot py. And then the first thing you need to do is enter the suid. So we're gonna paste that from our previous telnet interaction. And then you're gonna type in the uh, configuration dot cfg. And then we wanna turn that into a cfc file. So we're gonna go conf dot cfc. So then if all everything went well, we will get nothing. And that's exactly what we got. Just nothing popped up. So that means in this folder we now have conf.cfc, which is perfect. So now we're gonna keep this open over here. Let's slide this over a little bit. It's all smooth sailing from here. So we're going to go into the camera again. You can go to the parent and click flash FS, system, app core.d, config.d, and then here's our original configuration file. So what we're going to do now is just pop it over, and this already is backed up. We have nothing to worry about. This new file should be around eight megabytes, eight and a half megabytes or so, and the original is 6.3. So what we're gonna wanna do is overwrite this, perfectly fine, and now the configuration file is on the camera. So in theory, if you restart it right now, you would have 320 by 240 resolution. So now the next step is to add the menu upgrades. So to do that, very easy, we're just gonna go up to flash BFS and there's gonna have this uh, system folder in there so we're gonna go to our folder and we're gonna take all these files it should have appcore.d battery.icons and ui.d as a folder and here's our common DLL that I was talking about before the reason why we ran that stop app so we're going to transfer this into that system folder. Make sure you don't transfer it into the BFS folder because then it would just be in this general area. So you want to transfer it into the system folder. Once we do that, we're going to be overwriting some original files. Perfectly fine. Let's click apply to current K Q so that it doesn't keep asking us. It's transferring successfully transferred everything is great now let's verify that so what we're going to do is go back to our telnet and we're just going to type in one simple word restart enter and at this point you should see your camera restart and it could take a minute but once it restarts you should have all of your camera upgrades now, if this seems a little daunting to you, there are some uh, listings online, such as eBay, that do offer this as a service. I know some uh, listings on there also just sell a totally upgraded camera already, if this isn't something that you're up to. But if you made it this far, I think you can definitely do it.